the officials tonight. John Moreau on the left, Larry Limbo in the middle, and Sam Croft as you look at the screen to your right. We're all set. Wake Forest and 14th ranked Duke. Tim Brand along with Billy Packer with you at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Tim, you can see that Mike Krzyzewski still trying to get that size. Lang now into that starting lineup. He tried Crawford Palmer for a while. If there is a weakness on this team that separates them from the Final Four, it may be at that power position. They need another strong rebounder. Tap controlled by Wake Forest. This is Rogers, and Derek McQueen will handle it up top. He's being guarded by Bobby Hurley. Another one of those great confrontations between point guards tonight. Hurley and McQueen. Little skip pass down to the low post, and it's lost out of bounds. It'll be Duke Ball. Good low feed. King was sitting down well. Beautiful defense on the part of Duke. Duke normally man-to-man -man pressure defense. Offensively, they love to run the motion. Dave Odom feeling much as Mike Krzyzewski does that you've got to be able to shut a team down with tough man-to-man. -to -man. And they've gone man-to-man -to -man as well. Leitner with the turnaround, 2-0. Leitner over 20 points, over 10 rebounds per game, just one of the nation's best. Second time a feed inside's been picked off. Good idea, poor execution, here comes Duke. Leitner really fight for position inside. Davis kicks it out to Hurley, penetrates and tries to bank it in, fight for the rebound, nice lag rebound, followed once again by Davis. Inexperience really hurt him. When he goes up for a rebound, he's so strong, he has to assume there are going to be other people there instead of relaxing. King with the penetration. The foul's going to go against King. Then we talked about early Wake Forest and worrying about blowouts. When you come into schools that have had great basketball traditions and have outstanding teams, as in the case of the Dukes in North Carolina, when you go to Oklahoma, those type of places to play, you really have to be worried early on in the game of those great runs that sometimes they put on you, the 16 to twos. Before you know it, you better warm up the bus and go home. So Wake Forest, really important for them to settle down, get in this game early. Early shot is short. McQueen with the rebound. Anthony Tucker in the ball game now for Wake Forest. Dave Odom trying to get his club to settle down. Now you notice Leitner playing a one-man zone because he knows that Medlin's not going to be an offensive threat. Tough shot followed by Tucker. It's nice to have a man come in as a sixth man and produce right away. Tucker has a lot of experience. I think he actually performs better out of that role. Comes in with a little fire. Interesting article written recently about him and said maybe his versatility has hurt him because Dave Odom can play in so many different places, he hasn't gotten his own slot. Last touch by Lang, it'll be Wake Ball. 4 2 Duke. But Leitner is really getting position on Medlin down inside. They've been able to hit him at will. McQueen. McQueen scored double figures the last two games. There's Rodgers. Leitner was pushed by Medlin right out of bounds. One thing you don't want to do is give Rogers confidence early. Well, credit that basket as much to Medlin getting away with a foul as Rogers being at the right place at the right time. We're tied at four. Nice pass to Leitner. Medlin's in real trouble on Leitner. He hadn't even been close to him yet on any of those passes inside. Leitner is just eating him alive, getting perfect position. The passes are there as well, but Medlin, one of the things, if Medlin is not going to be a factor offensively, statistically, and he's played almost 20 minutes a game, he might as well sacrifice himself with his body, turn turn it into a fist fight down in low because he's got to back up and wise and just go and sacrifice statistics because he's not going to put much on the board as it is. This is the first one. That was the first personal on Medlin, the second team foul against Wake Forest. Leitner is an 81% free throw shooter. Medlin this year 
has uh, committed 28 fouls, which is not very much for a guy that plays 20 minutes. That's what he's asked to do is to play power ball inside. Wake Forest being extremely strong on the boards. They normally are. They led the league last year. Good pass. Rodgers. Correction King. for three. Layton seems to be everywhere. Hurley shot around the rim and comes out. Unusual to see McCaffrey early in a ball game miss two open jump shots. He has really been drilling him now that his ankle is back to almost 100%. You know what though, Billy, watching him in warm-ups, he was struggling even then. He was one of the last ones out with Leitner, just firing jumpers from 15 feet and was really struggling. Well, I'll make this prediction. If he gets any more wide open jumpers, the next one he buries. <laughs> Matter of fact, the net's not even going to move. Did you see Rodney Monroe's comments after his 48 point performance. He says, if I miss my second and third shots after I make my first one, I can guarantee you I'll make the fourth and thereafter. Well, he has two things going for him. One, he's a great shooter and two, Coach Robinson has the confidence that he eventually will get on a roll, so he never has to look towards that bench and say, hey, should I pull up on my shot? 8-5 Wake Forest. They've been doing it on the strength of rebounding. Hill for three. Maybe I should have predicted Hill. <laughs> so Thomas Hill, the sophomore from Lancaster, Texas, comes in and drills a three-pointer, and we're tied at eight. So far, Wake Forest has done what they needed to do, and that is stay in the game early. And they're more than staying in the game. King with the turnaround puts Wake back up on top, and King now has four points. The two clubs almost mirror each other in regard to what they're trying to do on the floor. Top hard nose man-to-man defense. Hurley for three. Duke not getting any. Help on, on the passes down floor. Wake Forest able to get the ball down court very easily. It's no sense pressing a guy like McQueen if you're going to allow the other fellows to be wide open. Rodgers is fouled. And the foul is going to be on Crawford Palmer. That was a good exam example, Tim, of the power of this young man. Now Palmer and Leitner are going to go up and try to stop him. It makes no difference. He's got the powerful hands, powerful body. Gets it up anyway. And what's interesting about him and the combination that he has, which reminds me a lot of the Charles Barkley and Carl Malone's, is with all that power, he has a very soft shot. percent free throw shooter and he really rims that one on the back and knocks it out. You know he's got to be a little nervous. Playing that, you know, last year at this time he's playing the high school game in Durham. Outstanding shooter, North Carolina State record holder for three point shots. In high school, he hits the second. So with 14.54 remaining in the first half, we're tied at 11. Now this word from our good friends at Natural Light. Is out rebounded Duke eight to three here in the early going of this first half, and thus the 11-11 tie. Did we see that backcourt duo, most points scored since back in the days of Johnny Dawkins, 46. That was Saturday against Maryland to get those two combining for 46 points. Let Leitner roam in the middle, and you got a pretty tough team to beat. Tough to see Maryland get another bad break when Williams went down. Hard to fathom everything that's really happened is. to that program. A great young player and going to be out for a couple of weeks anyway. This is Davis. His shot off the front of the rim. McQueen will try to push it up quickly. Pull He's up, got the shot up. and he hits it. Excellent lesson for young players right there. If you'll pull up at that foul line, give the players an opportunity to make their breaks from the wings. Nobody picks you up. You've got the jump shot. Still have good balance to get it off. I don't see Duke playing with the intensity that they brought back from Charlottesville after the licking they had up there. Now Wake Forest, Billy, has brought in Wise, and Tom Wise 
will try to be more aggressive on Leitner. Now Duke now playing with Palmer and Leitner down in low, trying to get something started in the low blocks. Of course, Leitner can't step out and take that jumper. Wake really backing in their defense right now, giving up the three-point shot, which is there. Hurley nails the three. Good job by Hurley. Recognized the defense, took what they gave him. Second time he's hit from beyond the arc, and it's 14-13. Blue doubles. Excellent legal screen by Wise on Hurley. Always a good idea to pick off a guy like that. Ahead to Davis. That foul. Tough shot. Rebound Tucker. Nobody preventing any passes from taking place. Not like Duke University to allow the pass to be made. There's no overplays on the wings. Wake Forest getting about anything they want to initiate their offense. Hurley, nice pass inside to Leitner, and he's fouled. And the foul is on Rodney Rogers. That's We're going to see right here, the ball goes right over Wise's head. Rogers comes over from the weak side and tries to help. He commits the foul. And Tim, that's what I was talking about before. Wise and Medlin. Between the two of them are playing right at 26 minutes a game. And, and their role has got to be to work on the opposing postman. Could sacrifice themselves a little bit, get a foul or two. But they can't play pretty defense. And he sits down, Leitner goes back to the foul line, but the foul is picked up by a man had to come over from the weak side, Rogers to help out. You might as well pound him yourself. That was the first on Rogers, the third team foul. Hits the second. On the floor right now for Wake is Medlin, Rogers, McQueen, King, and Silas. Both Rogers and King can step out and shoot that jumper. King hangs, can't get it to go. Air ball followed by Rogers. And he is left handed. And <laughs> the scouting report would show that, so. You know, that was not hard for him to go to the opposite side and use the rim to ward off the defender. There's Leitner again. And again, Rodgers has to help out because Medlin not there. So that's two quick ones on Rodney Rodgers. See, Medlin gets picked by Crawford Palmer. No switch. Too late for Rodgers. But there's where Medlin ought to come right down and commit the foul himself. That's a good point. If you want to sacrifice somebody, it's going to be Medlin, not Rogers. You need him in the ball game all the way. Well, you figure Medlin's averaging 2.4 a game, Rogers is averaging 17 a game. You don't want Rogers to have to sit down because of foul problems. So Leitner adds another one. He has six now for the game, pushes the Duke lead to two. We've got 12.33 remaining in the first half. And at 81-4, he's a little bit under by about uh, four and a half percentage points where he was last year where he led the ACC in free throw shooting. Chilton's in the game now. Good double team by Leighton. Lack of inexperience by Chilton's drove right into the teeth of the defense. McQueen sits down for the first time. Childress not recognizing that he's going to be double teamed makes the play tough. Leitner does an excellent job. And when you have a player that's as good as Hurley is at guarding the dribble, it's a good idea to give it up to somebody else and not challenge him at what he's best at. Five turnovers now for Wake Forest. Duke has yet to turn the ball over. And in the games that they played against Duke last year, Wake Forest turned the ball over 40 some times, 43 times in the two games. So they're kind of getting on schedule here. Well, Duke turned the ball over 24 times against Maryland, 11 in the final 10 minutes. And they turned over 24 times in the loss to Virginia. Really showing a lot of patience tonight to run the offense. Whistle and a foul away from the basketball. And this is going to be called on Antonio Lang. That's his first. So 11.55 remaining in the first half. So it's a three-point Duke lead. Antonio Lang, and that's his first second team. Steve Avery, Dave Justice, and Jeff Parrott. Of the 18 Duke points.
points. Leitner and Hurley have combined for 13 of them. While of the 15 Wake Forest points, Rodgers has seven. Wake Forest with the edge and rebounds. And that's pretty much kept them in the ball game. Chris King gives it up to McQueen. He'll push it up against Hurley. Man-to-man -man Duke defense. Wake Forest with that one four on the inside. He, King picked up those feet just when he thought he had the pass into Toronto Owens. Wake Forest really having a tough time getting in sync, getting in rhythm. But they're just down three points, and Dave Odom has had an opportunity at this point to play a lot of people early. I want to remind our viewers to stay tuned at halftime for the NCL Trivia it's Contest. Not, okay. You can Don't win a great cruise for two. That's for the sake of both teams, all right? Keep stuff off the floor. Coach K making a little announcement here. Somebody threw either some ice or something on the floor. He quickly stands up and said, for the safety of both clubs, let's stop that. Crowd's fired up tonight, Billy. They were reprimanded early. They were in here throwing tennis balls back and forth across the court. Of course, you're talking about an unpleasant task to tell those kids stop throwing those balls. That poor guy got booed out of here. <laughs> Inside the Leitner. No place to go. I think he got away with a walk, and Hurley drills a three-pointer. And now, now they say it's a two-pointer on the line. All the two officials on the outside concur on that one. Well, the hands went up immediately, and then he was overruled. So it's 20 to 15, Duke. is going to have to do some talking to Hurley if guys like Wise and Mellon are going to come up and set those solid screens. So they'll be putting him on the floor all night. Good defense. Better than good. Davis just solid outside. That brings Dave Odom off the bench. Complaining that he was tackled. Well, I don't think so. I think that uh, Davis just did a great job defending, took the switch, took on the challenge. Childress is an outstanding shooter and quick. So that makes it 20 to 18. He's not shooting well for percentage because of his shot selection, but he does have the ability to put it up, and in time should be an excellent score. Inside again to Leitner. It's worked all night. Leitner has a tough reverse layup, though. Can't get it to go. Wake Forest with another rebound. Christian was trying to draw the foul on that particular play and was surprised he got it off. Inside to Owens. Turn around and has it partially blocked by Lang, but they'll call Lang for the foul. Owens, another one of those promising freshmen that Dave Odom brought in, getting a lot of playing time early in this ball game. That's the second on Lang. So Trelawney Owens will go to the line. He's a 75% free throw shooter. He's only six for eight. Trelawney Not bad. Owens. Well, he's only been playing about 10 minutes a game and averaging right about four points a game. He's a young fellow that does have the ability. He's got the wide body, has a soft touch. Should be an excellent role player by midseason with his club. And he makes the first one. Wake Forest hanging in without Rodney Rogers, who already had picked up uh, three offensive rebounds and seven points early on. Second one rolls around, fight for the rebound. And Siler was the last to touch it. It'll go to the Blue Devils. And Siler has been quiet so far offensively. But he's a fellow with the athletic ability to really explode in a game like this one that's going back and forth. And he's on McCaffrey. And they're going to go to a little zone trap right now, 1-3-1, one, one, but he is good job by Hurley beating everything. This is Palmer. And it's 22-19, Duke. Well, you hate to go if you're a coach and go into a zone trap and then have it beat with dribbling. One of the things the trap is supposed to do is eliminate the dribble. On the floor right now for Wake is McQueen, Medlin, Owens, Tucker, and Siler. 
Good idea, bad execution. High low post situation. Right now it looks as if Wake is fortunate just to be down 22-19. Well, with Leitner out of the ball game, if they're going to make a run, this is the time to try to do it. Siler on McCaffrey. John Barry had a great first half, Georgia Tech, and then when Siler moved over on him, he has such great leaping ability to stop the jump shooter. You can see right there, just when McCaffrey thought he had the shot, he was on him. Tough he buried it anyway. McCaffrey. Oh, my. And here goes Siler. Watch this dunk. I was wrong, Tim. I said that McCaffrey would bury his next jumper and not move the cords. He buried it, but he did touch a little bit of the rim with a man right in his face. 9.05 remaining first half. Good job by Siler. And Owens capitalizes. Siler is a lot stronger than McCaffrey. So he just shot that ball loose. You think about what Siler could have done had he not had the knee injuries. Well, I think it's amazing that he's still as quick as he is now because he had that rehabilitation wiped him out basically for a year. McCaffrey trying to get some screens and they're doing a good job running in from side to side. Hurley working against McQueen. You see the screens down and low to get McCaffrey free. McQueen tightens up this time on Hurley. Palmer will try to set the pick and they'll reset. Duke kind of complimenting Wake Forest for their defensive effort here and the job that they had to pull it back out. Shot clock at five. Hurley fires and Owen with the rebound. Tough shot for Hurley. Kind of fading away to the right. Didn't square up. I think the clock got away from him. Yep. Both of these teams do a lot of things very similar on both ends of the floor. Owens again making a nice move. That's goaltender. No, they're going to call the charge, Billy. They're not going to get in the bucket. The basket has to count. It was released. before the shot. Here we go. Owens making a move. Contact was made. Yep, we released it. Yep. I back Seven. off. 24-23. <laughs> now a word from our good friends at Natural Light. Demon Deacons right in front of the fans. Not much room here to breathe. It's warm in here as well. And that is to Coach K's liking, I'm sure. Duke comes out with Leitner, Hurley, McCaffrey, Kubek, and Davis. Well, last year, Tim, in the two games, Duke won 97-69 over in Greensboro and 71-56 here at Duke. So you can see that their clubs were used to beating Wake Forest very easily. And tonight, it is not taking place. They have not had that big run as they had last year in both games. Leitner with an easy time right down the lane. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports. And the use of this broadcast without the express permission of Raycom and JP Sports is prohibited. Childress and Hurley. Hurley's going to sense that he can take this ball on the dribble. Whether he can or not remains to be seen, but he's going to want to go after him as opposed to the way he's been playing between. Tucker has it go right through his hands. And that's turnover number nine for Wake. 26-23, Duke, 7-25 remaining first half. Leitner back in and just looking like it is scoring will in this game. Again, Davis with a good switch. King has it get away, and Siler loses it out of bounds. Turnover number 10. As I mentioned, and I looked it up, it, it wasn't 43, it was 46 turnovers in those two games last year. We're at the six-minute mark. Dave Odom really upset with those last two passes because there wasn't, they weren't even contested, and both entry passes got away. Well, they're on a pace right now to have 40. The key right now, as I said.
see it. They have to figure out a way to stop Leitner from either scoring or making an easy pass. Davis inside to Leitner. They collapse on him. Good recovery by Silent. Double teams and turns their back. McCaffrey and Hurley have got to offset. They can get easy jump shots when the ball goes inside to Leitner like that. Shot clock at five. Shot goes up by Leitner and a rebound goes to Wake Forest. This good is Tucker. Tucker on a good job there and pushing it right out. McQueen backs it in. McQueen with two double figure scoring games, Georgia Tech and Colorado. And he's now starting to show form that we saw as a freshman. Last year, hobbled by injuries, just a shell of himself. He has four points in this game, 5.45 now remaining in the half. Tucker really looking to help out inside. Leitner with a rebound in the paint, banks it in. Christian Leitner with 11 points. He's really having a big night. Tucker with a tough shot, not even close. The rebound goes to Duke. Got the numbers for a break. Look at Davis. Nice. Excellent feed by Bobby Hurley. Davis is a good finisher on the break. Actually had a four on two. One drop ball. Hurley took it to the middle. Nicely done. 32-25. Biggest lead of the night for Duke. King made a nice judgment that time. Realized he had the jump shot, but there was nobody anywhere around to rebound his shot. So he waits patiently and gets a better one. King closes the gap with 440. Remaining first half. McCaffrey, this is for three if it goes. Tyler right up in him. Getting all to that shot a little bit. Tyler will try for three and hit it. An explosive score. Cuts the lead back to two, and Tyler comes right back with the foul. Billy, it's almost as if they do one thing well, they yep. come back and make a mistake. Well, just think about what Silo did right there. Why would you try to make a steal on a man in an open court area when you are on the defensive and you're running? I mean, he wasn't in position to make the steal. The object is contain the dribbler, get him under control, and then maybe go for the steal. And most times when you get a steal in the open court, it's because the offensive man made a mistake, not you. And look at, we've got Grand Hill into the game. We didn't know whether he'd play or not tonight. The statement. By Mike Krzyzewski is, I may only use him if I really have to. Grant Hill with a broken nose, the son of the great Calvin Hill of NFL fame. South Lakes High School in Reston, Virginia. He is an outstanding player. A little anxious here, though, and walks with the basketball. Queen's confidence starting to rise. Uh, I mentioned about his injury last year. He tried to play basically on one leg. There are so many outstanding guards at his position in the league with Corsiani and Hurley, and, 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 and it's so difficult with Kenny Anderson types. And so he just went farther and farther down in confidence, but it's coming back now. 332 remaining in the half. It's a two-point devil lead. Here we see, and I mentioned earlier, Tim, that Duke has not played good prevent defense on the wings. They're allowing the ball to be rotated without any problem. And there's a case where it's rotated over to Siler, who uses that good leaping ability of his to elevate himself up for a solid three-pointer. Wake Forest, Billy, comes out with Siler, Wise, Owens, King, and McQueen. Duke has Palmer, Lang, both Hills, and Hurley. 
And you can see that shooting percentage at 62%. And the two losses where they were beaten badly last year, they shot right at 40%. And one of the reasons I think they're scoring so well percentage wise there hasn't been a lot of pressure on the shooter which is very uncharacteristic of a Duke team. More ball movement by Wake this time. Still can't get the shot to drop. Here comes Hurley. Great hustle by Siler. Palmer at the top of the key kicks it around the hill. He'll fire for three. Here come the Deeks. Squared up on that jump shot. Had good rotation on it. Gonna call it on King. That'll be his second. Foul number 24 by Forrest Chris King. That's his second and his 17 foul. Well, you can see this, the shooting percentage of the opponents 38%, Duke up at 57%. That's since that game at Virginia where I understand that when Duke arrived home from that game they got off the bus still in their uniforms and came right in here and practiced. So the intensity level for the two games thereafter was very very intense. Today it's not here and it hasn't been here apparently on the defensive end since the game started. Wake yeah, Forest taking advantage of it. The game in late practice will get your attention. Right now Duke's number one in the ACC in field goal percentage. Also an excellent free throw shooting team. This is Grant Hill, just a freshman, high school All-American at South Lakes High School, averaged 30 points a game in high school. Nobody can tell me that mass doesn't take away some of your performance. I mean, even if you do have vision out of it, it just must feel so uncomfortable. It still does hamper your vision. There's no question about that. Owens to the baseline, dribbles into trouble, throws it away. This is Hill. Thomas Hill, and he's fouled. Thomas Hill, the MVP at Duke's big win at Oklahoma this year. Tremendous explosion. His father was a track star, and you can see that some of those genes were carried on as he just broke away from the pack right here. McQueen not making a good decision to try to go for that block. It gives Hill an opportunity to go right to the foul line. That's McQueen's first. You mentioned Thomas Hill's dad. He's the assistant athletic director at Oklahoma, who's a great track man, as you mentioned, world-class hurdler. Won the bronze medal in the 110-meter event in the 1972 Olympics. Thomas is a 74% free throw shooter. Real good concentration on that shot. Brings the crowd to near silence. Takes his time at the line. Again, the pass goes right up the sideline. Nobody trying to break it off. This is Tucker with a power move. Second time Tucker's come in off the bench, converted immediately. It's one of the best halves Wake Forest has played in this arena in a long time. Thomas Hill. Davis with the follow. Well, he's good. He's fouled. Beautiful body work by Davis. Got right around Medlin, then put the body back on him. Medlin then didn't have any place to go to reach out for the block. You see it right here. Now watch out. When Davis gets around him, he'll go back into Medlin with the body. Medlin wondering what happened. <laughs> He's wondering where that hand came from on his left cheek. Well, again, it, you know, in my opinion, he just has to go ahead and and not allow people to have those baskets on the inside. I mean, he's not a shot blocker. He's not a great defender. You just got to be a kind of guy that powers people around him. Another Wake Forest turnover. Well, they've given it back 12 times now, and they trail by six. Wake Forest does not want this to get away from them here in the last minute 45 of the first half. And if you know you're going to be pressed after miss after foul shots like that, here it goes over Medlin again. Why would a Medlin be the guy taking the ball out of bounds? 
Tucker. Look out. Nice job. tonight and he's taking the ball to the hoop very well. He was fouled by Brian Davis. You like to see some emotion out of that young man. That's the only thing that separates him from being a fine player. Excellent hit ahead. Davis tries to come across. No chance because Tucker took the ball to the basket aggressively. I could not agree with you more. I think he possesses a great deal of talent. He just needs that fire and he seems to have it there. Tucker's got six points. McQueen has done a good job preventing Hurley from going ahead and penetrating on by him with the dribble. Now there's a case where Wise fouls Leitner, you know, 18 feet from the basket when he's not in a position to receive the ball. Leitner had already gotten by him though. Yep. He's just trying to grab him. Well, Leitner has been extremely active tonight. Perfect case where you've got to play defense with your feet, not your hands. Another thing we ought to point out about Leitner, the tremendous stats that he's having and the great year he's having, uh, the thing about him is that he does not have another power player working with him in the lineup. He'd even be more effective. Reminder, Wednesday night, NC State against North Carolina. Nine o'clock start time there. Rodney McRow, of course, we told you, 48 points in his last outing in the win over Georgia Tech. And North Carolina coming off that double overtime win against Virginia. Another turnover. Three on two. Nice pass. Oh, another nice pass. Beautiful break. Thomas Hill finishes it off. Now there's Duke defense. Overplaying passes down the sidelines, just making it difficult to even initiate your offense. The Wake Forest did a good job this entire half staying in the game. Another turnover. We talked about those blowout runs. Dave Odom, you've got to get your club settled down here. You don't want to blow you out right before half. Inside foul. I believe this one will be on King. And with 50 seconds to play, Wake Forest should go for one shot. They also should expect to be pressed on the inbounds play. Surprisingly, Rogers coming back in with two fouls. He's been out. At, since the 12 minute mark. So Tucker will go out of the ball game. The foul is not on King. It's going to be on Phil Medlin, and that is his third. You would expect Duke to really put the press on here, try to keep this run going if the free throw is made. Well, the sophomore puts that one right through the net. He'll try to push the lead to 10 here. You see Tom Wise come in from Midland. He'll sit down with three personals. Again, Hill brings the crowd to silence before he releases it and drills it. And here comes the press. five seconds to go but make sure you take Duke out of it and not have them continue this run which now they have an opportunity to spread this lead beyond double Brian Davis, with 32 seconds remaining in the half after having worked hard for 18 minutes to stay in the game allowing the last two minutes put you in a position on the opponent's uh, home floor to be out of the game although they did come back 11 down with six minutes to go against Clemson on that court with a big win they had in overtime. Before this run, Billy, I was about to say Wake has to feel very good in the fact that 
the game was still close, and yet they weren't playing that well. And they had Rodgers on the bench during that entire time. Nobody picks up Rodgers, so the inbounds pass can be made. It's a 14-4 run by Duke over the last five minutes. Inside the King. In his last one to touch it, it'll be Duke basketball. Really confuses me here. And if you go into a one floor and hang on to that ball for a while, it'll allow Duke to score again, and now they can hold it for the last shot. Well, when you turn it over 16 times in the half, you can bet you'll be down by a lot against Duke. Here's Hurley on the break. And he's fouled. Good job by Hurley, recognizing the defense was overplayed. He just broke long on this one. Christian Leitner recognizing what was going on and led Hurley for an easy basket. McQueen with a foul, Hurley to the line. So it's 49-34 now with 16 seconds remaining in the half. Now they waste the time out in a TV game trying to get the ball back. This has been a disastrous minute and a half for Wake Forest. And Dave Odom very upset. They love it here at Cameron. Tim, with 50 seconds to go, Wake Forest had possession of the ball and had the ability to get the ball in bounds. And I mentioned at that time, and they were in a position, I guess, down eight. In a position at that time, hold it for the full 45 seconds, making sure that Duke stops that run. Here we are with 16 seconds, so basically we had, what, 34 seconds have gone off the clock and down now by 15. And in a position, the way Duke's playing right now, to prevent the inbounds pass, to be, to be worse than that. Billy Wake also looks very confused. I mean, they're walking around almost sulking. Duke's but, just running by him. Well, I thought they had an opportunity early on when Duke was not putting that pressure on any passes on the wing to stay in the game and do a nice job because Duke really didn't have the intensity level to play one of those games where they put you away early. And now they have as much mentally as physically taking themselves out of the game in the last few seconds. Duke, as expected, comes out with the press. Double in the corner to McQueen, and McQueen's foul. Foul will be on Christian Leitner. But see, only five team fouls, so not a bad idea. Team's pressing you. Billy Wake Forest with 16 turnovers, and Duke has scored 20 points off those turnovers. Right. See, there was a case, Tim. They could afford to aggressively go after the steal because they wouldn't put Wake Forest on the foul line anyway. That was the only the six-team foul. Now they're not guarding a man taking the ball out of bounds, which gives them Lang all the way back as the, the safety net, and there'll be a big overplay on the inbounds pass. So that's the end of the first half with Duke breaking it wide open. The Blue Devils lead 49 to 34. Tonight's ACC action is brought to you by Norwegian Cruise Line, Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, and CNB, and by Food Lion. Well, the storyline at halftime, the first half anyway, Wake Forest with 16 turnovers. Duke scored 20 points off those turnovers. And the Blue Devils went on a 17-4 run in the last four minutes of the first half. And as you look at the score, that's it, 49-34.
Time now to salute Diet Pepsi's best of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Take a look at some of the statistical leaders. Rodney Monroe, the scoring leader, had a tremendous 48-point effort against Georgia Tech this past weekend and moves ahead of Kenny Anderson of Georgia Tech. Rebounding still Dale Davis of Clemson, followed by Gugliotta and Leitner, Mackey and Lewis of Maryland. The assist leaders, Chris Corgiani of NC State, Bobby Hurley of Duke, not too far behind. Then comes Crotty, Rice, and Anderson. The steals, Kenny Anderson, Corgiani, Tyson, Gugliotta, and Rick Fox. Those are the Diet Pepsi best of the ACC. The ACC has a long history of developing great athletes who go on to succeed in professional sports. ACC universities are also known for producing success stories in many other areas, such as medicine, engineering, and business, just to name a few. Do you know what all these people have in common? Their road to success began when they learned to read. So remember, stay in school, use your library, and read. Time now on this Monday night for the Budweiser scoreboard. We'll show you what's happening around the country in college basketball. Georgetown and Villanova, that game now a final. Villanova beats 19th ranked Georgetown, 63-56. Indiana leading Purdue 20-8. That game in the first half. And East Tennessee State has beaten the Citadel 96-76. Furman over Appalachian State, 91-87. George Mason with another win, this time over East Carolina. And James Madison with Lefty Drizel over North Carolina Wilmington, 73-69 in overtime. The Atlanta Coast Conference basketball on Raycom Sports and Entertainment. Our score at halftime, Duke 49 and Wake Forest 34. Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball on Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports will continue after these messages from your local ACC station. Time for this week's Norwegian Cruise Line ACC Trivia Contest. And the question for this week, which ACC player has been on the cover of Sports Illustrated more times than any other during his college career? Write your answer on a postcard along with your name and phone number and mail it to ACC Trivia Contest. Post Office Box 33367, Charlotte, North Carolina. The zip code 28233. A winner will be drawn at random from all correct answers received by January 25. And will be awarded an exciting cruise for two on the Norwegian Cruise Line, the Athletes Fleet. That's fleet, Billy. A reminder, you must be 18 or older to win a cruise. We'll be announcing the name of our lucky winners and the correct answers to the questions every Saturday and Sunday for the rest of the season. So be sure to tune in. Do I, have, do I have a chance to work on that one? I said athlete's fleet, and you looked at me. You thought I was saying athlete's feet. No, no, I was, I was trying to think about the trivia question. I, uh, I think I know the answer to that one. Well, don't but give I, it yet. Well, I might be wrong. Yeah, it but you're probably right me. in to get the cruise. <laughs> what did you think of the first half? Well, Wake Forest played exactly the kind of game that they wanted to play, considering what Duke was doing. They weren't putting a lot of pressure on those passes on the wings. But Wake Forest played extremely well, particularly when Rod Rodney Rogers went down. He was off to a pretty good start in the game. They stayed in it. But then all of a sudden, what they had to worry about was that Duke blowout run. And it came to them, came primarily not because of Wake, what Wake Forest did physically, but what they didn't do mentally. How about the depth of Duke? They played an awful lot of folks there in that first half. It's hot in here, and they were pressing and putting a lot of pressure on Wake. Well, Dave Odom went to his bench and, and got pretty good play out of a couple of guys as well. I, you know, I thought that Trelawney Owens came in, gave him some good minutes. So that uh, both teams probably kind of equal in regard to the number of people they play. Probably the real problem for Wake Forest has been that nobody that came in could do anything with Christian Leitner, and that obviously uh, helped Duke a great deal. And I assume that problem will continue. Uh, down low because Leitner, he's had his way on the baseline, and when they sag down on him or double, double down on him, everybody's been hitting outside, Hurley and McCaffrey especially. And it has been a matter of, of mistakes that Wake Forest has made on their offensive end of the floor, and here's Leitner getting a rebound just by moving his feet and following the ball well. Good pump fake on the inside, and he draws a, a good basket on a putback. Billy, let's take a look at the U.S. Air halftime statistics. Well, obviously, field goal percentage, Wake Forest at one point in the game when they were just down by two points, were shooting about 60%. You can see it's dropped a little bit, and Duke is starting to raise theirs. They were at 40. The main thing here, of course, is turnovers. You can see Duke with just three turnovers, Wake Forest with 16. And the points off turnovers, obviously, as you mentioned, 
have been uh, a major factor here. Now, what does Wake Forest have to do to get back in this thing? Well, a key thing in any time that you're playing in a place like Duke University or get behind on the road is to really concentrate and come back gradually. They did a good job, and they have some experience with the comeback, as I mentioned earlier, as they did 11 points down at Clemson. They're going to have to mentally get back into this basketball game, realizing what they did well in the first half, and stop making so many mistakes on the offensive end of the floor where they try to force passes inside that aren't there. Now, I know before the game you were concerned about Duke trying to go for the knockout punch too early. How about now? Is it too early? No, I believe that Duke, uh, they were very patient in this ballgame, particularly Bobby Hurley. I, I thought he did an excellent job not trying to make plays that weren't there. Now they're in the second half. They've got to work in margin. I think, Tim, when you get yourself in a position, if you've got a 15-point lead at home, you have a team that's reeling, I think you should go for that knockout punch right at the start of the second half. Try to bury them, get them out of the way. That means force maybe a couple of fast breaks, take a couple of three-point opportunities, force this game to get a little ratty for the start of the second half, which is exactly opposite of what Dave Overton would like his team to do. All right, so we're just about set for the second half. We're at halftime, and Duke leads Wake 49-34. Raycom Sports and Entertainment and J.P. Sports exclusive coverage of ACC basketball is brought to you by Central Fidelity, Nationwide Insurance, and by Buick. Stay tuned for the NCNB Players of the Game Award. NCNB will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. That's the NCNB Players of the Game to be awarded near the end of our broadcast. Christian Leitner with 13 points, Bobby Hurley with 11, and Thomas Hill with 10. Wake Forest, Billy, doesn't have anybody in double figures yet. Well, they had a situation where Rodgers uh, played only seven minutes in the first half, really, and, and had himself on the way to a fine double-figure game. One of the things about a freshman player, and even the good ones, they have tendencies not to be consistent in their scoring. You know, they'll have a, a half where they'll score 16 and maybe get two in the second half. They, they have to learn to keep themselves involved in the game throughout the full 40 minutes. And that's uh, probably the only thing that I've noticed about Rodney Rogers that he's not been consistent in and, and that is a, an involvement each and every time down the floor. You saw the comparisons of the centers and it has been Leitner dominating the pivot thus far. Here are the scores. Rogers King and Tucker doing the scoring for Wake Forest but again there's nobody in double figures. Wake Forest somehow has to find a rhythm. They've got to be more patient. They've got to be able to break the man to man, and they just have to get more movement, I would assume, Billy, in the offense. Well, as I said before, their role right now is to try to chop this thing down at the 15-minute mark, get it down somewhere around 8 to 10. At the 10-minute mark, try to get it down around 6. Gradually work themselves back in the game. If you're Mike Krzyzewski sitting on the other bench, this is knockout time. You got it at 15, try to get it to 20. Even if they do make a little break on you, take a bad shot or two, and it gets down to 12, and you can you know, go back to settling down. I watched a, a beautifully orchestrated game yesterday in St. John's, Connecticut. Lou Karnaseka goes into a place where a team tries to knock you out with their great press, which Connecticut has. And he would never allow Connecticut, and his ball club never allowed Connecticut to get into a frenzy-type pace. The game stayed down in the 50s, a 60-type ball game, and St. John's came away the winner the first time Connecticut's ever lost a game in their new building. So that's the kind of thing that, that Dave Odom has got to try to orchestrate for his club right now. Whether they're experienced enough to do it, that remains to be seen. So far in the ACC, Virginia has beaten Duke. North Carolina has beaten Virginia, and this is the way the standings look right now. Of course, North Carolina and NC State, that game coming up here, that should be a, an outstanding game. You can see that here Wednesday. And then Duke plays North Carolina next weekend. And speaking of Virginia, it looks like their women's team will move back into the number one position in the nation with that incredible victory in the triple overtime at North Carolina State. 11,000 people in attendance there for the women's game. Real tribute to women's basketball in the ACC. It's nice to see people who have worked hard start to reap some of the, uh, the fruits of their labors. Boy, Debbie Ryan's done an outstanding job with that Virginia team, too, and I agree with you. I assume they'll move back up into that number one spot. And Kay Yao has uh, probably been as instrumental 
in the development of women's basketball in the United States, along with Pat Edson, as any woman going, has done a great job in the Olympic movement and certainly has been a credit to the game, whether you look at it on the collegiate level or the international level. The ACC and the SEC always strong in women's basketball. This is Leitner inside, starts things off quickly for Duke, makes it 51 34, and we're just underway, second half. Well, there's a technical foul going to be called right now. And let's see who it's against. Is it, well, for delay, of delay of game. Touching, touching the basket. Now, I didn't see a warning in the first half. Was there one? Good point. I didn't see it either, and a warning is supposed to be delivered before the technical. Siler, nonetheless, goes to the line. Evidently, there was a warning in the first half, and that's a situation that some people feel somewhat of an unfair rule in the fact that when somebody has a delay of the game by slapping the ball away, the referees warn both teams, and at that point, the first team that violates gets the technical, even if they hadn't done it the first time. Now there's Leitner, gets the ball, puts it back down. I, I really I really didn't think that was a delay of the game. He didn't push it out of the way. The ball came in his hands, and he merely put it on the floor. It certainly wasn't blatant. Touchy. Siler makes one, Billy. Touchy call there. Siler makes one. Now Wake gets the ball back. Can you imagine how many minutes they've all spent talking about defensing Leitner during that half? just as he had in the first half. This is McQueen. Wake's getting tons of opportunities. Can't convert. Here comes McCaffrey over three and two, loses the handle. McCaffrey needs to be the recipient of passes on the three and two. This is a dunker. Boy, Rogers normally will take that right to the hoop. Wake Forrest comes out more aggressively here in the second stanza. It's Hurley, and he just throws it away. Thought Leitner was taking the back door on him. In fairness to Bobby Hurley, Leitner should have been there. You know, he gave he gave the move as if he was going to fill that lane, and he just stopped running. Stopped at the elbow on the right Fair. side. So when a man makes a backdoor cut as the passer, you have to assume, and he's supposed to go all the way through. He can't fake his own teammate out. Good help by Leitner. King loses the handle. So does Lang, but he gets it to Davis. And the foul's going to be called on McQueen. And we have seen some better ball lately <laughs> on the part of both teams. But you know what's happening here, Tim, is, is that the fella who normally would be catching the ball on the break and filling the lanes happens to be in the middle leading the break. Now, you can see Lang, he has no interest in handling that ball all the way because normally it would be Hurley, but Lang had the breakaway. He has to learn just to be patient enough, take the middle until a better ball handler comes. I'm going to tell you something. I think that was double dribble on Lang. So does Dave Odom. He's having a conversation right now with one of the officials. Davis drains the first one. That is the least of his problems, however, <laughs> at this point. You know, to be brutally honest, the game has not been well played the entire way. It's been sloppy. King and Rogers involved in the offense. Nobody should take a shot to those fellas and touch it. Queen turns it over and gets away with it. Siler really wants it. He gets it. This is an adventure. And there King and the basket and the foul. So Chris King finally gets it and converts. And now he'll go to the line. But you can see that Duke was out pressing all over, taking the chance that he could come up with another steal, which is you see Leitner out at the top of the key, trying to double team. It turns out that Wake Forest can convert that time. You can see Duke is going for a knockout here. So Bobby Hurley's first personal. King makes it a three-point play, and it's 53-38. goes to zone. They're tired of seeing Leitner down there one-on-one -on -one with Medlin. McCaffrey's shot is blocked. Here comes Siler. King. Well, Jim, you pointed out something. I did not see it. In, in the warm-ups, you said McCaffrey really looked like he was struggling with his jumper. I and there so. he was not quick off the floor. Net is hung up a little bit. Do you get, do you get a feeling 
and you've played, uh, you know, on the football scene and played basketball as well. But you watch the Duke team. They've had a great run of two games. You know they've worked hard. It looks like this team's legs are a little tired right now. Oh, I agree with you. There's no question in my mind. Sometimes you work so hard and you need that day of rest. This club looks like they could use it, even though they're leading at this point. Siler back to Rogers. Can't get it. He got pulled that time by Davis. No call. Lang. And he's fouled. Good judgment by Lang. And he knew he wasn't in position to take that on the lob and dunk it, so he just came right back down. Hurley fires it up high. Lang realizes he doesn't have it for the dunk, comes back down, takes a little stutter step and gets fouled. The foul is on McQueen. You're right, Lang walked up to the teammates at the foul line and just shook his head and said, I couldn't get it. Yep. Didn't have the handle. Now, Lang, the only fella on this team that has not shown that he's going to be a solid free throw shooter, although he hit that one nicely. But in time, he's going to be an outstanding basketball player. Now, Wake Forest really has to retool their thinking. McQueen out of the game. It's going to be very difficult to run their offense the way they'd like. Childress in there, and Childress is going to want to try to bring this back in a hurry with some three-point shots instead of looking inside for King. King and Rogers really banging inside. Well, that was not getting to Siler. Here's Siler. He is very anxious for the basketball. Yeah. I think it's time to get it to the horses. There's Childress. He gets one off. And Medlin with the follow. Think about Siler there. He'll make something happen. Well, it's 13. And if you're Dave Odom, you want to get it down in the 10 range at the 15 minute mark. Ryan Davis drifts back outside, gets it to Leitner. Good steal. Swatted away up to Siler. Look out. Coming back. That's 11. Just chipping away with 16.30 remaining in the ball game. That brings the crowd back into it. Well, they always have the great sixth man here. Maybe as good a sixth man as there is anywhere in basketball. Oh, tough shot by McCaffrey. Bad shot by McCaffrey. Rodgers can handle the ball in the open court. This is Childress. Turnaround. How about Brian Davis hustling over to save the ball before it goes out? Shot clock now says 75 seconds. That's right, and, and not, the officials don't notice it. I don't know why it hasn't been brought to their attention by the, by the score at the time. Here's McCaffrey. Much better shot, still can't get it to go down. Leitner. That big lean shot of his. Pushes the lead back up to 13. Inside the King. Stole it yes. from Rogers. Wake Forest on an 11 to 4 run. And as you mentioned, Billy, what they had to do was just chip away, and they've done that quite nicely. Right. At the 15 minute mark, they had it to 11. Not quite 10, but moving in that direction. And they're staying in that zone. Mike Krzyzewski must recognize his team did not have their legs tonight. Now, now John they know. Rowe, I think, yep. finally says the shot clock's a little bit shaky. Now John looked up there and thought maybe he really needed glasses when he saw it at 65 seconds. So 14.52 remaining in the ball game. They'll adjust the shot clock, and we'll take a break with a score 57-46, Duke. Christian Leitner having an outstanding evening. Excellent hands on the inside. Here you see the little leaner. And you know, not enough contact there to gain the advantage to call the offensive foul. Medlin tried to hold his ground. Leitner was 17 points, six rebounds on target for another one of those double figures in both area games. Leitner gets a breather. Crawford Palmer comes in now for Duke. 
The guy to watch is Chris King from Wake Forest. He's got seven points already in the second half, 13 for the game. So he's come to life. Now Wake really picking up their defense. Good movement on the part of Wake Forest. You know, you can sense that this club doesn't feel they're out of this ball game. And right now, Duke looks like a tired club, even with an 11-point lead. The Deeks look much more aggressive here in the second half. I agree with you. Childers with a three-point shot. Off, yes! Off the fake of a pass. Three for Randolph Childress. Fifty-seven forty-nine. Give Dave Odom some credit too. Changing his defense. Just couldn't handle Leitner on the inside. Went back to the zone. Bobby Hurley shot won't go. The follow. Rattled in by Palmer. Big put back there. Duke really struggled. Tough shot by Childers. Dribbled into trouble. And Hurley will push it up. You notice nobody filling the lanes for Duke. Again, we talked about being tired. Normally, Hurley on the break like that. He ought to push that ball down the floor and somebody fill it up. McCaffrey for three, and it pushes the lead back to 62-49. That decision by Childress to drive inside for the bad shot gave Duke the opportunity. Here's Rodgers. He put Davis on his back and said, look out. If you want to take a ride, jump on. Wake's being much more authoritative, both offensively and defensively. Leads 11. Oh, Jordan. Nice job. So he's out of bounds. Blue Devils get it back. Replacing Brian Davis. Leitner back in the game. He's not ashamed with regard to his outside shooting. He can step outside and take a three, but what he's doing now is posting up inside and Rogers. Coach even, though, even though it's his own. Gives Brian Davis a rest. This is Hurley. For three. Another zone pack game. Duke recognized and has taken advantage of it with two straight threes. Nice pass. Beautiful backdoor cut. Tucker with the easy layup, 65-53. Fans, be sure to look for details at Diet Pepsi displays for a chance to win ACC tournament tickets, U.S. Air tickets, or other great prizes, all from your friends at Pepsi. Great course doing a much better job in the second half, not turning the ball over. That stretch of about a minute and a half. At the end of the first half, they must have turned it over ten times. Here they are again. This is Childress. The challenge. And he puts it in. He challenged Thomas Hill, who was Childress. athletic enough to stop a play like that. Couldn't handle it. The lead is ten as we approach the 12-minute mark. Wake down that 1-2-2 two, two zone. There's a case. Ravenna's got to come right across and commit the foul. You can't let Leitner have that one. Well, McCaffrey touched it last, and Wake Forest got away with one. Time out on the floor. We'll take one as well. 67-55. Now a word from our good friends at Budweiser. Six Duke turnovers in his half have allowed Wake Forest to climb back into it. Joe just passes inside. Here's the play where Rodgers just had Davis on his hip. Went right on by him. Good backdoor cut that time to Tucker, who lays it in. Wake Tucker, Forest. McQueen, Billy. Tucker and McQueen both back in the ballgame for Wake Forest. Siler as well. McQueen with four fouls on him. But at this point, if you're Dave Odom, you've got to make the move now at the 10-minute mark to get it down 6-7 range. Siler takes it right at Leitner and explodes over top of him with a soft jumper. The lead is 10. Siler's called for the foul, but it was a good foul. 
Well, you can see Duke just throwing the ball right over Wake Forest. And Rogers at 6'7, no match inside from a standpoint of those lob passes. Leighton is 6'10. Coming over from the side is Siler. So that's three on Siler. Leighton at the line. It in. So Leitner now with 20 points. Stay tuned for the NCNB Players of the Game Award brought to you by NCNB. Nine of ten from the free throw line for Leitner. And it's 69-57. Leitner now playing Rodgers down inside. It's going to be fun to watch. Siler. That fouled on the arm. In the process of shooting. He is so quick. Yes, he is. Coming back from a second major knee surgery. And he still has that explosiveness. Well, it's been documented he was one of the great running backs in North Carolina high school football history. You wonder a um, young man like this would take a fifth year maybe to play a little football. He's actually a great All-American in football and not an All-American in basketball, although obviously an outstanding prospect. First team, that is. We saw a former ACC player have a pretty good weekend in football, Ethan Horton. That touchdown pass the other day for the Raiders. Rodgers putting a man on the floor, no foul call. I would not want to have him angry. Rodney Rodgers is 6'7", 235 pounds, and he's just a freshman. He's going to get bigger and stronger as the years go. And he's also, with experience, going to learn how to take over games and use that talent to its fullest. No question about that. Mr. Basketball in North Carolina last year averaged 29 points, 12 rebounds, and four blocks. Wake Forest goes to their triangle in two. McCaffrey be play, being played man to man. Palmer pushes off inside. Rogers does a nice job. Last touch by Palmer. Wake gets it back, trailing by 10. Mike Krzyzewski using a revolving door here with a substitution pattern, trying to keep his club fresh. So Palmer and McCaffrey will sit down. Antonio Lang and Brian Davis come back into the ball game for the Blue Devils. 10.50 remaining in the game, and Duke leads by 10. He keeps that dribble alive. Somebody better come out. He's got a five-second. Nobody came to help him out. Again, Wake Forest running a 1-4 offense, but when you see a man hung up, you've got to come out there and either create a passing lane or set a screen to free him up because Hurley did a good job that time not going for the steal, just trying just try to contain the dribbling. Wake goes back to the zone. They showed the triangle of two just one time. Antonio Lang on the baseline to Leighton. Hurley will fire for three. Can't get it to go. Oh, nice shot by Hill. Side by Hill. So quick. Thomas Hill has 12 points. And Medlin had an opportunity to set the screen that time. Childress is a scorer, isn't he? He figures out a way to get the ball to the basket. The young man shooting under 40% on the year, but in time. He's going to learn uh, what it is to have proper shot selection. He's quick to the basket, just a natural score. Well, the foul was on Thomas Hill. So Childress will go trying to do what he has difficulty doing. And that shoot the free throw. And it's been kind of amazing. Wake Forest has made the run to keep the game from being a blowout, but they can't get it down below that 10-point mark. Change the complexion, try to tighten things up a little bit, both for the fans and the Duke team. From Clinton, Maryland, another one of the freshmen. One of the top guards in the country last year, and he puts that one in. He's only 18 years old. Number 21, Robert Siler. 71 60 Duke. And we're at the 10 minute mark. Let's check out this defense now. Wake Forest looking like they're going to go back to the triangle in two. And they put Siler on Leitner in this particular defense. 
Thomas Hill, yes, for three. Well, all good plans of mice and men. They both have figured, well, I'm going to switch up completely here. Put Siler on Leitner in that defense just to try to stop him down inside. And what happens, Thomas Hill banks one from outside. Chess game. Not a good pass. Ryan Davis almost has the snowbird instead loses it out of bounds. They are so quick. Well, again, you're throwing the ball inbounds on that particular pass, which is almost like a cross-court pass. You want to shorten up the distance. I mean, to throw it 25 feet is really inviting danger. Chris King goes out of the game. He's not happy. You could tell that by the expression on his face. Rogers, Siler, Childress, Medlin, and Tucker on the floor for Rick Forrest. The slap of the floor to signify it's time to really play some hard-nosed defense by Duke, trying to open up this margin and take Wake out of their offense. Tucker, and he's fouled out front. Wasn't pretty, but it quieted the crowd. Fouls on Duke's number 23, Brian Davis. His second. Brian Davis picks up his foul. second personal. Chris King back for the defense. And Chris King now settled down, comes back into the ball game, and Rodgers will go out. Childress fouled by Hurley. And what's happening to Hurley right now is Childress is turning the corner on him and lowering his shoulder, and Hurley's not getting over there in time to square up. Consequently, the foul's on Hurley. Two foul on Bobby Hurley. We'll see it right here. Now watch, as Childress turns the corner, he'll lower the shoulder. Hurley doesn't get over there in time to square up. Consequently, the foul. That's five team fouls on Duke. Neither team over the limit. Siler fires, has it blocked. Siler took a little bit too much time, and again, Hills with an explosive leap out. Lang blocks the shot, saves it from going out of bounds, and scores on the transition at the other end. Siler hesitated on the other end of the floor, and Duke was able to capitalize. Lang is going to be a great finisher on the break. Tim explode to the basket here. Good concentration as he kept his eye right on the target. Chris King with his third personal foul, but what a play by Antonio Lang. And Tim, you could kind of sense things coming here a little bit. Wake Forest starting off at the 15-point mark. Got it down around 10, but they never could bust it under the double-figure mark. And now Duke putting themselves in a position to go back up again. And seeming to get a little second wind here on defense. Leitner not playing wise. Childers for three. Not even close. Leitner to Hurley. Here come the Blue Devils. Brian Davis fouled by Tucker. Don't forget Wednesday night, 9 o'clock here on JP Sports, NC State against North Carolina. And there will be only one at the top. I obviously did not get a chance to see that North Carolina-Virginia game in person, but I was in Connecticut or somewhere, and I watched the highlights, and I saw something that's very unusual for fans that have followed the North Carolina team for a long time, and that was an emotional expression on Dean Smith's face that was captured on the highlight when King Rice made that winning shot. Very seldom do you see Coach Smith show that type of emotion, but I know he's been pulling so hard for King Rice to go ahead and pick up and become a, a, a very important factor for this club with leadership. And Chilcutt and Rice lead them to victory, which is something he's been pushing those seniors for all year. Now, the other side of that, Billy, I worked that game, and Virginia took it as a great compliment. Although they hated to lose the game, they took it as a compliment that, hey, we have arrived the way the North Carolina players celebrated when that game was over, because they knew they had been in a heck of a basketball game. So Jeff Jones doing an excellent job with that team. 78-62 as Tucker converts with 8.32 remaining in the ballgame. Wake goes into the zone. Mike Krzyzewski said, you know what? I, I like the fact to walk out of here with a victory. I've got a tired team playing right now and make Wake Forest work a little bit. 
And if you're Dave Odom, you're playing against the clock, you've got to go after him. There's eight minutes to go here. You're down 16. You can't afford to stay back. Inside the lane, a little jump hook off the front of the rim. Tucker throws it away. Not a fundamentally sound play. You know, you see kids in camp work on pivoting, and that's all that was necessary. 7.59 left. Under the eight-minute mark, and it's 78-62, so Wake Forest made a charge, and Duke held on and now has extended its lead. And, Tim, if you're Wake Forest now, you can't be concerned about trying to keep it close. Uh, Duke is in a position that it looks like Mike Krzyzewski has said, look, eight minutes to go. I've got the ball and the lead. I'm not going to make mistakes here. You're going to have to come out and get me, which means chasing a Bobby Hurley and worrying about the, the backdoor plays and, and Christian Leitner's isolation inside. So it's going to be tough on Wake Forest at this point. Now, Duke comes out with Brian Davis, Antonio Lang, Thomas Hill, Billy McCaffrey, and Christian Leitner. Say McCaffrey takes over the point, but it looks like Leitner wants to handle the Well, it, right here, Wake Forest decides they're going to stay in the zone. Mike Krzyzewski already showed Wake Forest that he is not going to play against the zone, and he's going to use the clock. Now, I don't know how patient you can be when you're down 16 to allow a team to do this. Fifteen on the shot clock. McCaffrey a three. He fires. And wait with the rebound. Childress. Air ball. Leitner with the rebound. And McCaffrey will just take his time. One of the things Wake Forest could think about if they want to be zone is to go ahead with some kind of a half-court zone trap. But they're going to have to put some pressure on this clock. Obviously down, you must come out and guard people or you'll have a technical foul for delay a game. But in this particular case, you, know, you, don't, you don't want to delay the game if you're on defense here. You want to go out there and force Duke to play. You've got to create some turnovers. Shot clock under 10, so Brian Davis will take it in. Here's Lang with the follow and the rebound goes to Owens. Good pass. This is McQueen. Nice pass again back to Owens and they score. Boy, Trelawney Owens is a load, 6'8", 240 pounds. And he's just a freshman. Awful lot of talent on this Wake team. Of course, the Duke talent has been well documented. They're loaded as well. Triple team on Leitner. Should have been somebody open, but nobody offset. That's the one thing tonight I'm sure when the Duke coaches go back and look at this film, they'll show the McCaffrey's and the Hills and the Hurley something that's very obvious. If a team like Wake Forest wants to triple team your post, man, there should be a lot of passing lanes available for three-point shooters. Leitner with five on the clock gets into Thomas Hill, and Wake pulls it back again. Strong rebound by Rodney Rogers. This is McQueen. Kicks it outside for three. Roger shot won't go. McQueen gets it back. We'll reset. Jelani Owens doing a nice job. No whistle. A lot of contact. And Owens knocks it out of bounds. Approaching the five-minute mark now at 78-64. Here we see Childress who constantly tries to go, actually lost possession. And there's a case where there was contact, nobody gained an advantage, and I think a well-called no-call. Wake Forest has had some opportunities here, continues to remain patient. Although I don't know how you're wise down, that is with yeah, five four, minutes left. You're under the five-minute mark, you're down 14, and you can't afford a trade basket. Siler. 
So for Robert Siler, that's four personals. You see, nobody blocking out. Lang comes right down the middle, uncontested. But I mean, D D Davis and Hill and Lang all in a position on that particular play come right in there because nobody blocking out in that 2-3 zone. And Wake Forest stays back in the zone. This is hard to figure. It makes no sense to me. Down 16, four minutes to go. Is the object to keep the game close or is the object to try to win? But I don't know what you achieve by keeping it close. I don't either. And Duke uh, wisely says, well, you know, we'll use up 35, 40 seconds. Shot clock at five. Thomas Hill with a tough shot, but he's got a fire and it hits it. He now has 20 points. Now this game, well, border not getting ugly unnecessarily. Just for a second, so he brings it back out. And he ought to bring it all the way out as he does. And again, now Mike Shashevsky's down here and incredulously looks over and sees him still in his own. Now they'll pick it out. Yeah, with three, 324, but it's got to be aggressive pickup here for Wake Forest. You got to try to turn that ball over. But you can see Owens is just playing back on Leitner. This game is over, and it has been over. Well, no, I, I think it's, it's been over when Wake Forest could not make that move and they got it down to 10. They'll call this one with Christian Leitner over the back of Owens, who did a nice job blocking out. That's three on Leitner. Leitner, and there's three minutes remaining in the ballgame. And it's a 19 point Duke lead. So with timeout on the floor, we'll take one as well and get a word from our good friends at Budweiser. 83-64 Duke with three minutes remaining in the ball game. And I would assume now that Wake will play an aggressive man-for-man -man defense and take this ball offensively up as quickly as they can to try to generate some, some points quickly. Well, you have to be thinking three-point shot here all the way. Them down by 19, and the fans already starting to think about Carolina. Owen's shot, long. Christian Leitner with the rebound. And again, they'll melt the clock. Wake Forest now coming out, picking up man-to-man. -man. And if you got a guy like Curley, you almost have to double-team him a little bit. So good with the ball. Watch Brian Davis work offensively. Oh, good turn. He's crossover. Beautiful. This is Siler. Siler's three point attempt off the front of the rim, and again, let's see. Duker just take its time. Hurley ready to go on the break. Leitner, who's the leader on this club, said, Wait a second, boys. I've worked too hard tonight. We're not going to run. The object is to win the game. some real signs of talent out there with that jump shot. A lot of them do. Nice. Davis now wishes he had just laid it in. Here goes the other end, and the alley-oop is too high. We'll go this way. Davis ought to just kick it back out. Instead, a little jump hook, reverse. Wake Forest will get it back. This is Owens. Ahead to Siler. The block. Well, we have.
have seen crisper contest. McCaffrey. We've seen the good, the bad, the ugly tonight. Be interesting to talk to Mike Krzyzewski now as to what he will do with this team the next couple of days in practice. Boy, because he throws up a brick, Billy. He, he obviously has worked them very hard in the last, uh, you know, five or six days. They need a break. The Pizza Hut game summary shows you 23 turnovers for Wake Forest. That was critical. 16 of those in the first half. Silent with 12 points. For Duke, 25 points off those turnovers we talked about. Leitner, 21 points, nine rebounds. Big night for him. And as Billy mentioned early on, he was going to be a factor, and he was. They still haven't stopped him. No, they haven't. Three shot. Childress. Thomas Hill, look out. Thomas Hill. The final score, Duke 89, Wake Forest 67. And now a word from our good friends at Budweiser. ACC Basketball has been brought to you by Budweiser, Nationwide Insurance, U.S. Air, Diet Pepsi, and by Buick. celebrating here at Cameron Indoor Stadium and the NCNB players of the game for Wake Forest Robert Seiler 12 points 4 assists and for Duke the man they still haven't stopped Christian Leitner 21 points 10 rebounds was a factor all night long once again the final score Duke 89 Wake Forest 67 for Billy Packer I'm Tim Brandt saying so long everybody exclusive coverage of ACC basketball on Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports.